We drove here, by the way. We're in New York. I live in L.A. I drove to New Orleans. I worked there, and then I drove up to Chicago, and I worked there for a while. Uh, it was a cool town. And um, we got shot at. That was a bit of a bummer, but then otherwise it was a great place. Who shot at you? What are you talking about? Oh, my God. I tell you about that whole thing, and we were on the shooting. Um, we were there doing the Justified thing, mm -hmm. and, and we had this crazy shootout. Did we not talk about that? No. We have not talked at all. We have not talked. Tell me what happened. It's a dramatic story. I don't know if you want to hear it. It's a long-winded dramatic story. I could tell it, and then you can cut it out of the podcast later. Okay. We won't, but go ahead. You want to try it? Okay, so here we... Forgive me, I feel like... This is the... Because Justified's coming back, which I'm very excited about. Yep. Justified, and you were, City Primeval. And where were you shooting it? We shot in... Um, Chicago, mostly Chicago for Detroit. It takes place in Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, Raylan goes to Detroit. I play Raylan Givens, mm -hmm. and then um, we're doing. And then I'm also going to play his brother, uh, Dave Givens, and then his other brother, Jim Givens. Doing, <laughs> they're triplets. I really wanted to mix it up this time. I was like, let's do I can't <laughs> why gonna, you ruin everything. We're gonna bring it back. I, I was like <laughs> I was like they said <laughs> I said, What <laughs> why do I want to bring back this character? I've already played this character for six years. And then I it hit me. I was like, What if he had a brother? And then I was like, They're twins. And then I'm like, wait a minute, everyone's done it. Jeremy Irons has done it, Nick Cage has done it, Lindsay Lohan. Van Damme, they've all done twins. All the greats have done all it. All the You're greats right. have done it. And that's when it hit me. It was like the clouds parted. I said, triplet? Raylan's a triplet. Uh, <laughs> and this has never been revealed in all the years you did Justified. Um, and I've watched open, them all. You never revealed. We should just start the podcast here. Okay. Because now people are in. Now they're in. So this is great. Raylan is triplets. One is Dave. One is Raylan. And then the other one. Jim Givens. Jim Givens. <laughs> Wow, the writers, their parents were like, we'll call you Raylan, you Dave, and you Jim. The great thing about my position with the Justified thing is I can get in the writer's room and really mm -hmm. you know, take it up a level. Mm -hmm. They love me in there. So, so we're, shooting, um, we're shooting at night in Chicago in, uh, at this park, very, very bad neighborhood. It was like one, two in the morning or something, and we're about to do a scene where I'm going to get in this car. We've got the road closed. Uh, and we're about to get in this car and we hear gunshots and we'd heard, we'd shot in some pretty tough neighborhoods. So we'd heard gunshots prior to this, but this was a, I don't know, it felt like eight or nine shots went off, bop, right. bop, 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 right. you know? And we're like, that's across from across the park. And then, um, I was standing next to the director and he's like, that's gunshots, you know? And, uh, and then we hear again, bop, 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 and you know, the first AD's walking over and he's like, everybody, those are gunshots on the other side of the park, but everybody needs to get down. Mm -hmm. It's fucking, it was the scariest goddamn thing. It went on forever. So then we started hearing cars. There's a car like that. And they're driving. You can hear them driving. And you realize they're coming around the park. Headed towards you. Headed right towards us. And there's, and if the gunshots and stuff didn't already kind of give you a tip on how, what kind of people we're dealing with, they completely ignored the road close sign, you know, where it says filming, don't come this way. And so they're coming straight down the street that we're on. Right. And they're just, you know, ra this um, machine gun fire. And it was, uh, it was, it was just they, insane. Cause the, did you guys all, you see, you're all lying down, like face down, getting as low as you can. It was a little... I remember, you know, the first day, I remember, you know, it's a weird thing because it, everybody reacts so differently. So there's everything from people running and diving under cars, every, the crews in those safety vests, and they were all throwing them off and people are yelling, get your safety vests off. Because I think at this point, we don't really know who's shooting and why they're shooting or what they're shooting at. Right. So it just feels like, you know, uh, gunfire and, and cars. Um, and there's things that I've been told happened and things that you remember happened. It was really quite, you know, and then there's other people that just froze, you know, that you just kind of need to grab. And, and the universal thing I've always heard about anyone from anyone who has been around gunfire is that, you know, it's gunfire immediately, even if you haven't served 
in the army or have had no ex- experience with guns that when you hear gunfire you know there's no mistaking it for anything else that's that was my experience yeah you, you uh, yeah you kind of knew right away that there was um you just know that's not fireworks as much as you want to know hope that's fireworks and then the sound of the engine and the it just kept coming and then um it was the strangest thing um next thing i know i i, I was with a couple others, you know, just behind this car. The weirdest thing to be in ra- your railing wardrobe. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Standing behind this car. Were you wearing a, uh, a, a were you wearing a gun, All a fake that. gun? Yeah, yeah. See, that's the part of this that's crazy is you're, yeah. you're playing Raylan Givens and you're wearing a gun, but it's all f- for, for, play acting and then a real gunfight breaks out yeah and there's these moments because like when these things happen everything you know it's that cliche everything feels like slow you know all the beats are very distinct and i do remember um i i don't remember i i was told i grabbed a pa and and threw her out of the way mm-hmm. um or used her as a shield which one well i my gut i've heard it, me, i've heard it both ways so, well, wonderful pa ashley and um <laughs> The reason I know her name now is because I was like, well, I apparently saved her life, so I should learn her name. Mm-hmm. I don't usually know the PA's names. I think what happened is I was, I grabbed her by the arm and I said, uh, babe, I ordered a protein shake like a half hour ago. <laughs> and, then, and then I was like, oh shit, someone's shooting at us. And then I threw her down, you know what I mean? Right. Like a shield. But I remember crouching down behind the car and I, you can't help it. I'm looking because I want to see you know so i'm doing that thing where i'm looking around the corner i'm like this is just like the show this is so weird i'm like what are you doing but i'm like i think it's okay anyway and i saw the first car go goes right by us i can hear the bullets hitting the thing off the back of the car because the, the car behind it is shooting at the car on the this front is when things started to become clear yeah you know and then the second car goes by this muscle car and those Dodge Chargers all tinted out. And there's a guy shooting a pistol out the window that's clearly been modified because it's like, pop, 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 right? Right. And the other guy's out the sunroof with a little machine gun. And he's shooting a machine gun. And those guys go by at like 100 miles an hour. And then, and I guess it, I guess at some point you, I can't remember had this moment like, well, okay, they're shooting at that guy. So that's all right. <laughs> you know, they're not shooting at us. And then a third car went by and the, the crazy thing is then they kind of continued around the neighborhood and you know, you felt like they were coming back and people were running into the, it was just, there's no law just, enforcement coming in at, the, at any point. I feel like we were a little understaffed. Um, yeah, that's like, what I was going to say. We had, you know, what's crazy about that situation. You sent three interns over to arrest them. I'm telling you, we had <laughs> one kid. Listen, I'm telling Steve, you. Steve, Ashley, get over there. Cuff I know, him. right? These, these moments. We had, a, we had one kid, Ben, God bless him, another PA, who was a friend of my wife's family who was like looking for a, you know, summer job. He was a film student. He was at the first corner you know, like one of those, you know, you put PAs down there and said, oh, if anybody walks down here, tell them not to walk down here because you're shooting. Right. And turns out he, God bless him, when the cars came around, he dove behind a car. His bus stop that he was sitting in just completely shattered. Like that kid would have been dead if he didn't, if he hadn't dove. And then a, a cop, we had a cop at one side, we had a cop at the other, you know, non, uh, and that guy I ran into like a week later, you know, I, and I remember talking to him like, cause it went on for a while longer. People, the cars were drove for a little longer and you just kept hearing gunfire because people started moving into the park and stuff. It was, took forever. It was just frightening, you know, and it's such a weird thing because you're just sitting there and there's so much gunfire. It was like a hundred rounds. You think... I mean, I assume, I assume one's going to hit me eventually. You know, you're just kind of waiting for that right. moment. It's right. just so bizarre. And that's when I thought I should call my agent and tell him to call my kids and tell them I love them. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you, uh, you know, you go through an experience like that. Did you learn anything from that other than? Yeah. No, it was really, I'll tell you a couple of things. One, I remember talking that I ran in, I was walking down c- streets of Chicago and this guy came out. And said, "Hey, uh, he, he goes, Tim. He goes, I'm. He goes, I'm. I'm the, I was the cop that was there that night on the corner. 
and you invariably with every whether it was him or whether it was the crew uh there's this thing where the next couple days next week or so you're just did you experience what i experienced there's a lot of that right what was what what you know tell me and it's tell me what you felt like when yeah. that happened and, and how talking did you to experience law it? enforcement was a, was a really helpful because i was like okay I thought it was crazy. <laughs> Did you think it was? He goes, that was a war zone. That was crazy. Right. And um, he's like, yeah, I got home that, that night and I realized I had a bullet hole in my shirt. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, my shirt. I realized later a bullet went through right by his bicep. But and, missed him completely, just went through the shirt. Yep. I mean, Jesus. he had a vest on, bulletproof vest on, but yeah, he said, he said, no, oh, that's one of the closer calls I've ever had. Yeah. He said in those situations, he's like, you know, they're like us. They're, they're just going to take cover. You're not going to return fire. These guys are shooting at each other. They got machine guns. He's like, if I, if I engage in, in any way, it's just a mess. It just becomes a bigger mess. No, you're, it was, it was fucked up. It was definitely a crazy. And then there was the, you know, like that thing where you're like, uh, you know, people will say, oh, you seemed real chill. You seemed really cool. You kept it all together. And I was like, that's funny because that's not the way I remembered it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. The next day, the next day was more emotional. It was like 24 hours later when you, when we were like saying, okay, we're not going to, I, we were supposed to, I was supposed to shoot the next night and not, again, in another bad part of town. And I remember thinking, I don't want to go to work. <laughs> I was like, I remember they got, I was like, I'm not sure I want to drive down to, you know, to the nineties and, and shoot again. And, um, I called the producers and I said, you know, I feel like I should speak up, you know, because yeah. I don't want to shoot. And I'm assuming the crew doesn't want to shoot. Should we be everybody taking a beat? And that was the more emotional day when you realized when everyone, when they came back and said, yeah, I, I think you're right. I think we need to shut down. That's when all of a sudden you're like, okay, now there's like tears coming down my face because you realize, oh no. So it really was fucked up. Yeah. 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 That, you know what I mean? Like if we all went back to work and maybe we could have in a very unhealthy way suppressed how crazy that evening was. Yeah. You yeah. all had PTSD. You needed to Oh my God. And then every time it. you'd hear, I already don't like those cars. But boy, they just really ruined it for me. You don't like the Dodge uh, Charger? That's a fantastic car. Wait a minute, are we cutting to a Dodge Charger commercial? No, not at all. Oh, We're not getting shoot. paid by them, but I think the Dodge Charger, or for my money, the Challenger, are classic muscle cars. <laughs> I'll, I'll take a late, uh, take a late sixties version, but I think the it's new so models good. are the new model. New models are incredible. So look at your comedy mind. What are you talking? Just about? going into a bit. I didn't mean to. I was trying to be emotionally available. And then I remembered who I was. <laughs> it just fell apart.